Trudology. Uh, let's uh, shift maybe here at the end to talk about this honeybee research. You mentioned about it. I was just I was so curious about what this all entails. So maybe tell us about what what this what this is about. Sure. Yeah. It, it sounds weird, right? It's like yeah. Hang on. I mean, you you work on the colonic microbiome in humans, <laughs> so why work on the microbiome of bees? And I think I have to credit a um, my postdoc, my current postdoc, Brendan Daisley, Dr. Brendan Daisley, who joined me uh, a couple of years ago now um, to uh, his uh, previous. Um, uh, supervisor for his PhD was a was a collaborator of mine, and so he said, you know, you you got to take Brendan on. He's really interested in the microbiome, but he works on bees. And I'm like, well, I don't work on bees. I don't know the first thing about bees. And in fact, <laughs> you know, I I get a nasty allergic reaction when I get stung by a bee, so I don't okay. really. Like yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but anyway, I I met with him, and he he basically told me that. You know, bees are obviously we all understand they're of great importance for pollination, but they're just also a fabulous model, eusocial insects model of um, how a microbiome might affect uh, social cues and uh, and other things. Mm. And so, uh, so Brennan started in my lab, and he's a very talented guy. He uh, he wanted to get so we have the robo gut right, which is the system that we mm -hmm. have to culture microbes from the human gut in an ecosystem on the bench. And so he created in a very short space of time after joining my lab, the row B gut, which is basically taking tiny, tiny amounts of, you can imagine a bee, you can dissect that out to get the microbiome. You can take that tiny microbiome and grow an entire ecosystem now wow. in the lab. And so mm -hmm. because we can do that, there's a whole bunch of microbes um, in the honeybee gut that we know nothing about. No one's ever studied them. No one's ever really bothered to look. Um, I think that's starting to change now. Mm. But they could have very big importance on the health of honeybees. Now, the the background issue to all of this is that in a very similar to way to what's been happening in humans, the honeybees have been suffering what we call colony collapse disorder. So they all yeah. of a sudden over the winter, they just die off, right? That, that never mm. used to be a problem and it's becoming more of an issue. And so Brendan's kind of hypothesis or thesis about all of this is that it's, again, it's similar to what's happening in humans. It's antibiotic use. And actually beekeepers do use a lot of antibiotics oh. uh, to keep there's certain pathogens that you really don't want in your hives. And it's sort of like mm. used as a prophylactic to sort of keep these things away. Um, and beekeepers, obviously their bees are, are exposed to the same herbicides and pesticides and things mm -hmm. that they are from mm -hmm. the crops that they're trying to um, pollinate. And so we thought this could be a really good way of looking at this so we created this roby gut and now we got all of these microbes and now we can test the microbes for the effects of antibiotics and pesticides and herbicides and all the rest of it so we're we're kind of doing that uh, well we are doing that um, but at the same time uh, we started something called the Canadian bee gut project because um, so there was something a few years ago still around called the human gut the um, American, American gut, gut project, project. Yeah. yeah you mentioned so that, we yeah. we modeled it on that so basically we're asking the question well what do bee gut microbiomes look like across Canada and actually we know a little bit of that. Some people have done some sort of, you know, independent studies of certain bees in certain areas. But in order to look across the whole of Canada, you have to really use the same sequencing system in order to, to keep bias mm -hmm. out of it. So okay. what we're doing is collecting bee samples across Canada in the fall. And then um, we're asking the beekeepers to then tell us over the winter whether their colonies collapsed or not. And if they didn't, uh, to then sample again in the spring so that then we have two samples, hopefully, from from hives that didn't collapse. And that, once we've sequenced it all, and once we aggregate the data, because we were asking for a lot of data here, you know, a lot of data mm -hmm. points, what we're hoping for is we'll start to see some patterns where we might see microbiome signatures that correlate with the ability for a hive to withstand the winter, essentially, for whatever reason. Yeah. And so that's what the honey bee, uh, sorry, the, the Canadian Bee Gut Project is. Mm. And at the same time, we thought, well, we can actually also culture a lot of these microbes. And so we're trying to see whether we can create healthy bee gut microbiomes that we could then use as a as a treatment, a probiotic, if you want to call it that. You've got to be careful, again, using the word probiotic, <laughs> but, right. but a, a way of sort of co colonizing hives to give them the right sort of microbes that might help them withstand, um, you know, insult. And mm. and then at the same time, because it's just become a big thing in my lab, it's just suddenly all this bee stuff. Again, there's social insects. There's incredible things that you can do to look at bees and 
see whether there are certain microbes that influence the way that they behave in mm -hmm. again an analogous way to humans quite a different set of microbes i imagine and different sets of pathways we are in insects and humans after all but uh, but it's it's really an analogous thing and again looking for metabolites and now bees have a simpler microbiome than we have so that sort of helps okay. and we also don't have the ethical implications you know we mm. we you know we don't like to kill a lot of bees we don't tend to do mm -hmm. it very often but we don't have to kill that many bees to get samples mm -hmm. of microbiomes mm. And um, so right now we're in the process of trying to set up um, germ-free um, bee colonies that, or, or I should say notobiotic larvae that we can colonize with p particular microbes so we can understand what that does to the, to the bee. And so all mm. of this stuff, it's really Brendan's baby. Um, I'm there, I'm allowing it to happen just because, you know, I can apply for grants with him and, and do all those kinds of things. I right. really fully expect him to go off and do incredible things in his own yeah. career. Um, yeah. And that's my goal all along is just to get him going. But honestly, mm. I've got so into bees that I think I'll probably maintain some bee work in my own lab for, for some time to come. I just think that they're fascinating. And, and the number of m novel species that we've isolated um, is is just kind of growing. We don't know what those do, you know. It's like <laughs> yeah. it's it's uh, at least in the human gut microbiome, it's it's pretty rare to come up with novel species, although we are finding them in the animami. Mm. But um, but in the bee gut, it seems like every other day, <laughs> it's a new thing come up, and and we just don't understand what they're doing, yeah. and um, and so maybe we can make a difference there. So who knows?